In the YouTube world, the most popular type of diffusion is the softbox, but you don't really see softboxes on professional shoots. They'll usually be using diffusion panels. But why? What's the difference? Well, in this video, we're going to be looking at the differences between softboxes and panel diffusion, the good parts and the bad, so you can decide which type is right for you. So here's an example of me stood in front of a hard light source with no diffusion. You can see that the shadows on my face and on the back wall are very harsh and defined, which is great for some situations and styles, but it's not always very flattering. You can get softer shadows by placing the diffusion in between the light source and the subject, and it's softer because the light is having to pass through something first. When it comes to soft light, the bigger the source, the softer it is. And also, the closer it's positioned to the subject, the better. You can get various sizes of each, but typically soft boxes are smaller. If you want to see a video of comparisons between different sizes of soft boxes and the difference it makes, I've got a video on that here. You can click that so you can watch after this video. If you're using a panel, move the light fixture back so that the light fills up the entire panel. This will give you more light and a softer light as a result. You might have to flag off some of the edges using barn doors to stop the light from spilling over the sides though. And if you don't have any barn doors, it's really easy to make your own. Check out this video I did, it's quite funny and it's worth a try. Diffusion comes in different types of material and each one gives you sort of like a distinctive quality. And just for reference, the material that I'm using on the panel is the same as the softbox. It's very cheap, but you could swap this out for any type you like. And all you have to do is just clamp it over the top or Velcro it round, it's super easy. But you can tell I'm using cheap material because it's creating like a horrible cross pattern in the fabric and we don't want that. We want it to be nice and even. Before I show you the examples, I want to show you the differences between how they work and how they're made so you can understand which would be best for you. So a softbox is kind of an umbrella shaped pop-up box with a sheet of diffusion over the front. They're affordable and usually relatively small, but you can get larger ones and square ones as well. You can mount it straight onto a Bowens mount light fixture, which is really handy. Easy to set up and to pack down. It's super portable. They usually come with like a honeycomb grid as well that you can just Velcro onto the front nice and easily and that stops your light from spilling over to the edges. The downside to soft boxes though is that the light is at a fixed distance to the diffusion. That means you can't get it softer, it is where it is. Now obviously what you'll have to do is just move the whole thing towards your subject to get it a little bit closer and that should make it softer. And also they're usually round or square in shape and you can sometimes see those edges in your frame or on your backdrop. And because you're fixing it straight onto your light, it can add weight to it and you've got to be careful not to knock it over or if you bump into your light stand it's going to topple over. So you want to make sure that you've got a good quality light stand and some sandbags. I'm actually using the Niwa boom stand. They've been kind enough to send me this black one here that I've got, but I've used them before. I've got a silver one as well. They're so good, like they're quality. Nice and heavy and sturdy and the legs are long enough. You just put a sandbag over the top and that'll keep your lights from toppling over basically. I'll leave a link in the description for those if you want to check them out yourself. Definitely worth it. If you've got expensive equipment and then you put it on a 20 quid stand, it's it's, you know, it's a disaster waiting to happen. So it's definitely worth investing in a little bit more of a professional light stand. So a diffusion panel is essentially just a frame with your diffusion material wrapped around and that is it. They're usually a bit bigger in size, so that means softer light and it'll also cover more of an area with light as well. They're quite versatile to be able to shape your light the way you want them to and they can be used outside to control natural light sources, which is an extra bonus you can't do that with a softbox. But the downsides are they're harder to come by as they're more specialist, very expensive, they take longer to set up and pack away. You definitely need more space to be able to control your light and you'll need a lot more equipment to make it work as well. So you don't only need a, a stand for your light, you also need another stand for your panel itself. But you could even use the boom arm of the Niwa stand to grip it on so you can get it even higher. So in all of these examples, the light was positioned roughly 45 degrees to my left and just over an arm's reach away from me. Now the first thing you'll notice is the panel is more even. Although I still have it at an angle, it looks a little bit flat because there aren't any shadows on my face. So you'll need a little bit more space to move the lights around to shape the light the way you want it. But that's also because I wasn't using a barn door and the light was spilling out the edge 
bouncing off the wall, that one, and, and then onto my face. It kind of filled that side of my face in, which is not what we want. So that's definitely why you need to take a few more steps to control or direct the light. It's really difficult, but once you get it right, it's really good. It is a lot softer. Look at the shine on my forehead and my nose. You can definitely tell a difference. And I'm really looking forward to getting to use these properly in a, in a bigger setting where I've got more space because I just think it's gonna look great. To be honest as well, I probably had it a little bit too bright than I should have. In fact, I think it was my ISO. I looked after I'd finished filming all the examples. I must have nudged it, but my ISO was way too high. So, <laughs> sorry about that. So you can probably see now why softboxes are so popular for YouTubers, because they're so small and easy to use, affordable, and they look fine. But you just can't get that same softness with a softbox as you can with a panel. You can get close, it's close enough. But if we're being picky, then no. Let me know which you prefer in the comments. I always like to know which your favorites. If you want to see more tutorials, gear reviews, and all that stuff, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs>